Yo, what's going on? So I've been doing a lot of record shopping lately, and the one thing that I've been really focusing on and searching for is soundtracks. And I want to talk about that today because I've both been able to find a ton of good music and a ton of great samples through the soundtrack shopping that I've been doing. And I really didn't start getting into buying soundtracks until recently, especially for sampling. But ever since I did, I have not turned back. Like it's really been the focus of what I've been looking for. There's a few reasons that I think soundtrack records are so good for sampling. Uh, the first one being is there's a ton of instrumentals and almost a lot of the times no vocals. And when there are vocals, they're literally not words, just sort of background vocals, which is perfect. Like they're so good for samples but it allows you to kind of go through any piece of a song and you're potentially gonna find a sample there. Whereas if you're listening to something that's more vocal based, if you're looking for just an instrumental sample, you might have to go through the intro or the solo or some, some part of that song that doesn't have the singing. But with a lot of soundtracks, you don't have to worry about that. Two, obviously a lot of the songs are really cinematic sounding, like they're really moody and that translates super well to beats. When these songs are being composed, they're basically trying to match the mood of the movie. So if it's like a love story or a, a drama, then you're going to get those same emotions from the songs and from the records. The third thing I've really been loving is a lot of the tracks don't have a ton of percussion. And what that means is you're not limited when you sample a track. You can really put whatever drums you want on it because you don't have to try to match the drums that are in the sample. The first thing to look out for when it comes to looking for soundtrack albums that might have a lot of good samples on it is one, the album artwork, just like any record I find. Um, a lot of times the album artwork or I guess the movie poster, it will give a good feel of what the movie is sort of about or at least uh, the mood of the movie. So when you go off that, you're gonna get a good idea of what you're gonna find on the record. And the second thing you'll wanna look out for when buying soundtrack records is the year that the movie came out or the year the soundtrack was made. Because if it's like 60s, 70s, you're gonna be getting a lot of strings and live instruments. Whereas if you start to get into like 80s and 90s, there might be more synth samples and things like that, which are still great, but um, I've really been loving that 60s, 70s sound. And lastly, the thing I love about buying soundtracks is a lot of times they're super, super cheap because you go into a shop, they've probably been sitting on the shelves for 10, 20 years, and it's not really something people are looking for. So you can usually find some great gems with tons of samples on them for like five bucks or less, like a dollar even. But what I want to flip today is actually this record I just picked up, uh, The Burglars. As you can see, Ennio Morricone amazing amazing composer super famous he scored like hundreds of movies if you ever see something with his name on it make sure you grab it because the the songs are crazy and there's going to be samples on it so i've got the sample loaded up on the npc here's a little taste of what it sounds like as you can hear like what i was explaining not too many instruments on there, super moody sound, and it gives us a ton of space to do whatever we want with percussion, bass. We'll have a lot of options of what we wanna to do to fill up those speakers. So first things first, let's just make a main sequence with this sample. Um, I got the BPM set to 83, and I'm not gonna change the pitch of the sample. I really like where it's sitting right now. You can hear too that I have the BPM set a little bit faster than the original track. I like the way that the, the next pad kind of cuts off the previous one. It just gives kind of this lo-fi rough sound, which I really like. But uh, now that we have that sample laid down, I'm just gonna lay down some drums. When you're sampling soundtracks and this sort of moody cinematics type of sample, uh, I find you really wanna match the drums to that feel. And one of the best ways to do that is not necessarily a super complex pattern, but you wanna make sure you have some good nuance in terms of the drums you're using and the percussion and that it has certain things that sort of just stick out in your ear because those little nuances will really match the sample well. So in terms of the hi-hat for this beat, rather than just playing one hi-hat sound, just doing this, it gets kind of old. I'm going to use the shaker and the hi-hat kind of going back and forth, working off each other. I feel like it'll just give it that nuanced cinematic feel. So it'll sound more like this. So let's lay that down, I'll add that in, and I'm also gonna turn off quantization on those hi-hats and shakers, um, just to make sure we have that human feel. Let's do it. Mm 
Now that we have that hi-hat sound, I'm just gonna add a kick and snare, and I'm gonna keep that pattern pretty simple, just to not combat with the sample too much. Let's do it. I'm gonna add a little ghost note kick into this beat, just to make it sound a bit more live. So I'm gonna take the kick and put that on 16 levels, and then I'm just gonna add one little quiet kick in there. Let's do it. To match that cinematic sound, I have that main pattern laid down, but I want to add in this tambourine just as an extra little percussion in the background. So here's the sound right here, but I'm gonna turn the semi way down on that, maybe to like minus nine. And then I'll lay that in just as like a basic person playing the tambourine. And then I'm going to turn it down so it really sits in the background. But like I said, those little nuances will really move this beat forward, I think. So let's add that in. And when I'm recording this, I'm going to try to give it a little bit of natural swing. So rather than doing this, I'm going to do it more like this. A bit more offbeat and it's as if I'm turning the swing up but I'm going to try to just do that manually because even if I make a little bit of a mistake it'll still sound a little bit more human so let's do it. You could hear I went a little bit offbeat there not intentionally it was just sort of human error but we'll take advantage of that. I'll, uh, I'll turn this down so it sits in the background a bit, but it'll really give a bit more of, uh, of a nuance and uh, some good addition to the percussion. I'm actually gonna add some reverb on that tambourine as well. That way it'll even more so blend in with the mix a little bit and it won't be at the forefront, it'll just give it some nice emotion. So let's add that reverb onto it. Perfect. It's really sit in the back, but I think it adds a nice, a nice sound. I'm gonna play with the semi on that a bit, just so we can sort of match the key of the of the sample a little. Yeah, I like it at negative ten. Sweet. So I'm gonna leave that as is. I think the drums are in a pretty good place. So now we can move on, add in a bass line. I'm going to do that just using the MPC, so let's add it in and see how that sounds. Let's do it. I like where this beat's going so far. I'm going to make another sequence with this sample. Right now we just have this two bar loop, but if we make another sequence, we can change it up a little bit and keep going back and forth between the first sequence and the second. So I'll make that. I'll probably just copy the drum pattern make a new uh, pattern with the sample, and then we can add another bass line onto that. I really like the way this beat's coming along, especially after making that second sequence. It really just took it to the next level. So now I think we can just add in an intro with this sample, and then it'll just give us a nice drop at the start of the beat, and then I think we'll be good. So let's add that in, and then we'll hear the beat in its entirety. Let's do it. So I really like the way this beat turned out. Main thing I wanted to get across was when you're looking for samples, make sure you don't rule out soundtracks. Um, they sit in the bins a lot of times at record stores, so you can get them for cheap and the number of samples you can find on there is crazy. Make sure when you're looking for soundtracks, you're not just looking for movies you've heard of. Look for stuff from all over the place, even if it's in a different language. That's probably a good thing. The one thing I will say is I wouldn't look for musical soundtracks, as in, as in like a movie like Grease. You probably won't find too many samples on stuff like that, but if you're a big John Travolta fan, Go for it, although I will say there's a really good drum break on the Grease soundtrack, so. But really appreciate you hanging out. I uh, love you guys so much. Thank you, I hope you like the beat. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see in a future video. Thank you so much, love you guys. Peace.